This next section of your fluoroscopy course is going to be on biological effects of radiation. It's very important that you read your syllabus um, and understand your syllabus uh, through these next few chapters. So I'm going to talk today to you about the early deterministic radiation effects on the organ systems. So within this lecture, there's a lot of um, objectives. Go ahead and read through these and make sure that you're able to answer all of the questions that or statements that are posed here. So early effects of radiation. So the biological effects of radiations that occur relatively soon after humans receive a high dose of ionizing radiation. So in this lecture, we're only going to talk about the early effects. Um, the next lecture will be on the late effects of um, biological changes within the body. So um, substantial evidence of the consequences such as effects come from numerous laboratory animal studies and data from observation of some irradiated human populations, which we're going to talk about. So um, talk about Chernobyl and um, some radiation accidents. So it's not common in our diagnostic imaging. Um, the doses aren't high enough uh, that we're doing. If we do some cath lab uh, procedures, there is some doses that can cause some skin changes. Um, also, it's produced by a substantial dose of an ionizing radiation. So in order to have early effects, you have to have a substantial dose of ionizing radiation. So somatic and genetic or hereditary damage factors. The amount of somatic and genetic or hereditary biological damage on a human undergoes as a result of radiation exposure depends on several factors. So we're going to look at those factors. Ionizing radiation produces the greatest amount of biological damage in the human body when a large dose of densely ionizing or high uh, LET radiation is delivered to a large or radiosensitive area to the body. So the factors that we're talking about here, there's four. So we're looking at the quantity of ionizing radiation to which the subject is exposed. And number two, the ability of ionizing radiation to cause ionization of human tissue. And three, the amount of body area exposed. Four, the specific body parts that are exposed. So those are the four um, somatic and genetic damage factors that we need to concentrate on. So with somatic effects, it's biological damage sustained by living organisms, such as humans, um, can be animals too, as a consequence of exposing to ionizing radiation. So it's dependent on the length of time from the moment of irradiation to the first appearance of symptoms of radiation. So um, the effects are classified as either early somatic effects, so this is the presentation, or late somatic um, the early effects is what I'm talking about today, and the late somatic effects is next week's. And you'll see that in your syllabus. So early radiation effects on the organ system. So deterministic somatic effects, formerly called non-stochastic um, somatic effects. So consequences include cell killing. So that's the biggest thing is cell death. Effects are directly related to dose received. So term deterministic somatic effects. So um, these effects are directly related to how much radiation a person receives. As the radiation dose increases, the severity of these effects also increases. The results have a threshold. So a point at which time they begin to appear and, um, and which they are absent. So um, we're going to show you a graph which helps explain this. The amount of biological damage depends on the actual absorbed dose of radiation. It's not the amount of radiation the patient was quote unquote um, exposed to, but the amount the body actually absorbed and had interaction with. So this is the graph demonstrating the existence of a threshold for early deterministic effects. So you can see here the severity of biological effect and you can see the absorbed dose of radiation. So there's a threshold and we're going to talk in just a bit about what that threshold typically is for the human body. So this graph demonstrates the existence of a threshold whereby early deterministic effects of an absorbed dose of ionizing radiation begin in an increased severity as the dose of radiation is increase so you can see you can see the biological effect goes up with the increasing amount of absorbed dose within the patient 
So late effects on organ systems, and we'll get into this a lot deeper next week. So two categories of late effects. So there's late deterministic somatic effects and late stochastic um, probabilist, prob, bo, probabilistic <laughs> effects. Whew. Both of these types of late radiation induced changes are consequences of high level radiation exposure or of low dose radiation delivered over a long interval of time. So that would be um, more like going to radiation therapy. And like I said, we're going to cover that in more detail next week. So early deterministic somatic effects, the, um, the depending on the time of exposure and can appear within minutes, hours, days, or weeks from the time of exposure requires a, a substantial dose of ionizing radiation to produce these biological changes after um, the exposure. So the severity is dose related. Um, with the exception of certain lengthy high dose rate procedures, diagnostic imaging exams are not usually impose um, radiation sufficient to cause these effects. So high dose effects include, um, you're gonna see the patients with nausea, fatigue, uh, epilepsia, blood disorders, intestinal disorders, fever, dry and moist um, disquamination, depression sperm count in the male, temporary or permanent sterility in the male or the female, and injury to the central nervous system, and that's at really high doses. So the whole body dose of um, six grays can result in many of these manifestations and organic damage occurring in succession. So we call that the acute radiation syndrome. So early deterministic effects, so you can see here with the guy here, he has burns um, or erythema on his arm of a former worker who was present at the Chernobyl uh, nuclear power plant during the 1986 radiation accident. So you can see here the changes in the skin based on the radiation dose they, they received. So acute radiation syndrome, so ARS, so it's also called radiation sickness. It occurs in humans after a whole body reception of large doses of ionizing radiation delivered over a short period of time. Um, if it, You can receive the same amount of radiation, but if it's put over a long period of time, your body has time to heal. But when you had, get a whole body large dose at one time or a short period of time, the body doesn't have time to heal. Therefore, um, you it's a lot more severe. So data from um, epidemiologic studies of human populations exposed to doses of radiation sufficient to cause ARS have been obtained from. So the atomic bomb survivors of Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, Marshall Islands who were uh, inadvertently subject to high levels of fallout during the atomic bomb testing in 1954. Nuclear radiation accident victims, such as those injured in the 1996 Chernobyl disaster. So, in patients who have undergone radiation therapy, um, we were doing studies on them also. So, symptoms of ARS and the three separate dose related syndromes. So, let's just go back and remind you here a syndrome is a medical term that defines a collection of symptoms. So, ARS is a collection of symptoms associated with high level radiation exposure. So the three separate dose related syndromes occur as part of the total body syndrome. So there's three different areas. We're going to talk about the um, hematopoietic system, the gastrointestinal syndrome, and the um, uh, cardiovascular, cerebral vascular syndrome. So those, the hemopoietic syndrome, gastrointestinal syndrome, and cerebral vascular syndrome are the three main things. So when we're talking about the uh, hematopoietic system, so it's also called the bone marrow syndrome. That might be easier for you to remember because it's more of what's going on. So the ranges are anywhere from one to 10 <clears throat> grays. The most radius sensitive vital organ system in the body. So it's the first to get um, the reaction to any kind of high dose radiation. So radiation causes the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets in the circulating blood to decrease. May damage other organ systems, causing them to fail as the body's not able to find infection or not able to clot if you get a cut. Um, several times, um, Survival times shorten as the radiation doses increase, of course. So the patient dies six to eight weeks after radiation exposure of two to 10 grays. If a patient received one to two grays, patient can recover 
within three weeks to six months. It can take that long. Um, bone marrow transplant plant and um, hematopoietic stem cells implanted in the patient helps. Most of the patients, though, do die from complications of the radiation from the burns or other um, areas of the body that are affected. The gastrointestinal uh, syndrome it appears at a threshold dose of approximately 6 grays and peaks after a dose of 10 grays. Um, without medical support, a patient may die uh, 3 to 10 days after being exposed. Even uh, if medical support is given, a patient will live only a few days. So the survival time does not change with the dose of the syndrome. So that's important. So this does not have anything to do with the dose and survival time. So survival time does not change with dose in the syndrome. Uh, severe nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea persist for as long as 24 hours. It's followed by a latent period for as long as up to five days where the syndromes will completely disappear. And then the manifest illness stage follows with severe nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, possibility of fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, lethargy, anemia, leukopenia, hemorrhage, infection, um, electrolyte imbalance. Um, so death occurs due to catastrophic damage to the epithelial cells that line the gastrointestinal tract. So damage to bone marrow can cause death to these patients also. Patient usually dies within three to five days. With the cerebrovascular syndrome, results from doses of 50 uh, grays or more. A dose of this magnitude can cause death within a few hours to two to three days after exposure. So the signs and symptoms are different, which is good. So there's excessive nervousness, confusion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of vision, burning sensation of the skin, and loss of consciousness. So the latent period uh, follows where the symptoms lessen or disappear. After a latent uh, to manifest illness stage occurs with increased severity um, appears, there's uh, disorientation and shock, periods of agitation, um, altering with stupor, taxia, edema of the cranial vault. Um, so all the vessels in the brain start leaking out fluid. So you have edema within the brain. Um, loss of equilibrium, fatigue, lethargy, uh, seizures, electrolyte, um, balance, meningitis, so respiratory distress, and coma. So an overview of the acute radiation uh, lethality. So you can take a look at that. You can see the predomal, latent, hemoporetic, gastrointestinal, and cerebrovascular, uh, and the different levels within them, and here's some of their, their syndromes. So... The major response stages of ARS, so presented in four major response categories. This, the prodromal or initial stage occurs within hours after absorbed dose of one gray or more. There's a latent period approximately one week after exposure with no symptoms. Um, recovery or lethal effects begin at that point. So the manifest stage is where the signs and symptoms become visible. And then there's the fourth stage, which is, which is the recovery or the death. So the body will recover or the body will die. So you can look at the graph here. You have your predomal stage. You have your latent period where all symptoms disappear or are down to basically nothing. And then you have the actual manifested stage. And the patient either dies or recovers. So those are your four stages. I'm going to stop there and we'll pick up in the next um, PowerPoint um, moving forward for the rest.